My name is Ezra Kodori Zilka. I was born in Baghdad on July 31st, 1925. My family is a Baghdadi Jewish family. Uh, I, I imagine we've been there since uh, all the Jews have been in Iraq, uh, uh, taken in captivity by Nebuchadnezzar too. And I was born after three girls, so my parents went on a pilgrimage when my mother was expecting me to, uh, to the tomb of Ezra the prophet in the south of Iraq. And, and that's why my name is Ezra. My native language is Arabic. I still speak Arabic. I used to read and write Arabic very well. But French was the language of, uh, of, of prominent families in, in Baghdad. We lived by the sea uh, in, in Ras Beirut. So in Beirut, I had my French education where I went to the Lycée Francais de Jeunes Filles, which was a girls' school, but there were two or three other boys. And, and then in Egypt, I went to the English school. There were all kinds of people, um, Muslims, Christians, not many Jews, because there weren't that many Jews. From a social standpoint, in Lebanon, Egypt, I, we, we never felt a difference. You know, essentially, I am a Jew, but I am an Arab. Uh, I, I feel it very, very uh, strongly. When I'm with my Arab friends, I, I'm very much at home. My father uh, wa was the, the, the most important uh, banker in, in the Arab world. He had his banks in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. He was a, a man that people trusted, who took, who took their deposits, and who, who, who intelligently loaned money to people who needed it. It's, it was simple as that. And, and if there had been dishonor in any generation, we, we knew that it would stick with us. We were two sisters, two brothers, father and mother. My first uh, nine months here, I, I spent at a place called the National Hospital for Speech Disorders because I stutter. And it, it was during the day. I was there for nine months. And then I went to uh, a, a, a prep school called the Hill School in Pennsylvania. I was lucky that, that during the war, when he was here. He was a very lonely father when he was here, but I used to come back from college every weekend to, to be with him, play backgammon with him, and hear his stories. Because to me, the greatest person in my life was my father. His, his reputation, his, his principles. Uh, I, I think of him all the time every day. When the war was over, I went back to the Middle East with my family. And my father realized in 1946 that we would be expropriated. So we had to rebuild ourselves. I trained in London uh, at Hambrose Bank, who were our correspondents. And and then my father sent me to Hong Kong to, to trade in gold, going to Macau to buy import license for gold, uh, going to Saigon to, uh, and seeing the gold come from Europe that we had bought that would be put on a plane to go to Macau. It, 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 it was all, it was fantastic. When I came back from Hong Kong, my parents took me to a Baghdad wedding at the plaza, and I saw my wife. I asked my father, is, a, is it a good family? Oh, oh, he said, very fine. I said, I'll marry her. That's the way it was. Nowadays, it is not the same. 
I'm an Iraqi Jew. That's what I am. That means that I speak Baghdad Arabic, that I remember stories of Baghdad. I have the honor of a good Baghdad Jew. I am the last generation. Um, because being 92, I don't know how many more people there are, how, many, how much longer I can live. But I am attached to who I am. I'm attached to my background. I'm proud of it. Yes, I'm proud of it.